MicroStrategy is now at the two-year point in its Bitcoin strategy. And after two years of exercising our strategy, our stock's up 123%. Bitcoin's up 94%. We have outperformed every major asset class, all big tech stocks, all enterprise software stocks. Google's up 54%. Oracle's up 42%. Bonds, silver, gold, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, CRM, and SAP are all down for right. this period. Right. So we turn in good results for our shareholders. We're doing it on the backs of volatility, and the volatility means Bitcoin price changing all the time, and the indefinite accounting treatment makes some of our gap financials look a bit ugly. But so the number one thing to keep in mind is we started this journey two years ago with an enterprise value of $666 million. We have added $5 billion to that number. We're up to five and a half or more to a billion dollars in enterprise value. It's up 730% in 24 months. Right. No, no strategy could have done that other so than a Bitcoin strategy. When people are scared and panicking, what do they do? They see they see red candles. They see their 401ks and their IRAs dropping. They think yeah. about their retirement plans that they had. And now, oh, shoot, like I'm, I'm watching it just drop 15 percent, 20 percent, 25 percent. What do yeah. they do? They panic and they hit sell, 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 sell. They do it. They pull a Kramer, sell, sell, sell. And they do they do exactly what they shouldn't do at you know at exactly the wrong time. So when everything's crashing, things are getting cheap. That's actually when the smart people are out there buying. That's when Warren buying. Buffett is like, sweet, I got 120 billion just waiting for Discounts. this moment right now. Yeah. Exactly. Everything's at a discount. But what the problem is is people panic and they sell at the wrong time. So I think if China were to invade Taiwan, you know, if the Russian Ukraine battle were to kind of heat up and get back into the the um more into the popular narrative again, I think people are going to panic and I think that will drive down all risk assets in general. Uh, and again, bring it back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, even though I think it's actually the world's best safe haven asset, it's the ultimate risk off asset. Most of the world does not understand that yet. They still think of it like a tiny tech stock basically. And so I think all of those uh, get hurt. Companies been executing on a Bitcoin strategy for the past two years. And it's worked really, really well, notwithstanding the volatility. Our stock's up 123% through August 1st. And if you compare our performance to Bitcoin, Bitcoin was up 94% in that time period. But the s and is only up 23%. NASDAQ's up 13%. Gold's down. Bonds are down. Silver is down. We nearly tripled, doubled the, the performance of Google. We outperformed Apple, which is only up 43%. Microsoft's up 34%. Amazon Meta and uh, and Netflix are down. So you never would have guessed that a mid-sized software company in the enterprise software space could outperform all of big tech and every asset class and even Bitcoin from a standing start. But it's worked extraordinarily well for us. I always tell people, know your time frames, right? If you're yeah. a trader, that's one thing. If you want to make quick gains and short it quick and try and think that maybe it's going to go down to 15 or 10,000. Great. But if you're a long-term investor and saver, you should be just licking your chops right now for these opportunities to buy Bitcoin on the cheap. Because at some point we're going to get through this. At some point the recession ends, we bottom, the bear market will be over, and then it's going to be off to the races again, right? The central banks are going to be back to their easing again. Uh, we're mm -hmm. going to see a flood of liquidity into the system, and a ton of that is going to go back into the ecosystem. And I think Bitcoin is easily up over six figures in a couple of years uh, and much higher, to be honest. But uh, we'll see where it goes. And I do believe that blockchain technology is going to play a significant role in a lot of that. But I also believe that in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's going to be layer one protocols that are ultimately going to probably last and stick around because th these layer ones are going to be what really help connect all of these systems on a global level through interoperability and things. And I think quite frankly, uh, as regulation really continues to set its claws into the crypto space, a lot of the cryptocurrencies you and I know and love today or hate are likely going to go to the wayside. And I think there's going to be a clean slate in crypto. And I don't know how drastic it's going to be. Maybe it's not that bad. Right. Firstly, the thing that gives you the best guide is something called the ISM survey. And you can Google it. You can find it. It's publicly available. And that basically... Anything above 50, the economy's expanding. 
Anything below 50, it's kind of stalling. And anything below 47 is a recession. And that's been going since about 1947. It's an incredibly good indicator and really useful. So think of it as a kind of weekly version of GDP. So yep. that gives you a very quick ballpark. And what's really interesting that no economists figure out, and I don't understand this, is it goes up and down. It's cyclical. <laughs> Right. right. Economists have linear projections. It's like, really? Yeah. Yeah. You can show a small child a chart of GDP and they go, well, it goes up and down. So what it does, if you see it going down and crossing 50, you know we're likely to be headed into a weak patch or a recession. Mm -hmm. um, if it's coming up from the lows, we can start looking forwards. So that's a really simple guide. The other way is the bond market's usually very good at this. So once yields start falling, Bond markets are generally derive their price action from two things, GDP growth and future inflation. So if bond yields are rallying, it's saying that GDP is probably slowing down, i.e. Okay. there's a chance of stimulus to come and bonds look a safe haven. So we had the same supply problem. And then we had everybody coming out of the military into the labor force. So that's the same as the pandemic. And what happened? Prices went up 20%. They then were negative 4%. And then they were sort of around the 3% mark for a period of time. And what the central bank did was what the government did is fiscal stimulus. They knew the economy needed yep. fiscal stimulus, which I think the US and all the economies do. We need to build the green infrastructure, the technology infrastructure, all of these things that have been abandoned for so long. Now, in a, in a boom time, when the economy recovers again after this, you might want to cap yields and say, we don't want this business cycle that we've just had where we have a boom bust again. So in which case, maybe they cap them at 3% or 2.5%. And what you're trying to do is have inflation running slightly hotter, but not much than your yep. yield. Those negative real rates mean you should get productive return on assets if you do it properly. So I think it's coming. Um, Europe is basically there now that inflation is likely to come down in the future. So yep. those two things alone give you pretty much all you ever need to know. Now, what's really interesting, the, the second degree of all of that is there's a bit of magic. So you look at this ISM survey, you go, well, how does it help me with my equity allocation right. or my allocation? All you do is turn it into a year-on-year -year chart. And all of the year-on-year -year charts of every asset from oil to bonds to commodities um, to you know, copper to equities to emerging markets to credit spreads are all the same charts. They're driven by the business cycle. And some things are pricing in more right now and others are pricing in less. So the bond market's pricing in less, as is the oil market. But things like tech stocks are pricing in an ISM of 35, which is a deep recession. NFT is basically going to unlock first access to the social media platform. That much I know I can do uh, without there being any problem. But ultimately, I would love to be able to set it up so that, um, you know, if if somebody creates a community, uh, like, you know, let's say it's whatever my domain name is, slash uh, Crypto Crow, right? And they build a community under that. And, <clears throat> you know, people are paying to access the people within that community, uh, you know, to present advertising. Well, I would like the NFT holders to be able to share in the revenue of that. Um, and, and there, there's a lot to it. Read through the article. It'll make more sense, but yeah, that's the murder of crows IO now. And there's other stuff, obviously. I mean, the main, the main stuff that, that, you know, are in the plans and in the works and things like that are all right here on the roadmap. So check it out.